K-State and KU on Monday night, 8 o'clock tip in Bramlage, ESPN. So nobody worry about finding ESPN Plus if you don't want to. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit. What is a realistic expectation for how this game goes for K-State? Yeah, I mean, my realistic expectation, and it it's weird saying this this late in the season, but playing hard and looking like you care, <laughs> like – that, that that's all I really want. Like, I, I don't really, I expect the game to be close throughout, but like, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, Oh, I expect K state to win. I, I just expect <laughs> to look like they give a damn for the first time in a few weeks. Yeah. I'd, I'd say seeing them come out and match KU's intensity, um, to start the game. Um, seeing what they're what they're going to do to to kind of throw guys at Hunter Dickinson because I think K-State's got to do that. You've got some bigs you can do that with. And then, you know, how do you handle – KU's problem has been they've been a kind of a three-and-a-half player team um, with three guys that can really score it, and Dewan Harris is a decent point guard. And then, you know, with the emergence of Johnny Furphy, what do you do? with this guy that's making shots and he's six, nine, so he's hard to guard. So you, you got different issues now with this KU team, if that's going to be who they are. Um, so, so that, that will be the, the biggest thing. And then, you know, obviously K-State's got to make shots and, and do some things on the boards and things like that. Take care of the ball that we've seen them struggle with all year. KU has not been a great defensive team in big 12 play, especially on the road. So, um, can you exploit that or not? I don't know. Um, so that those are the things I look at initially looking at this game. But I, I agree with Drew. Uh, Drew, with um, what kind of intensity and emotion do we see out of the gate? I would think that what you want out of this game, it, from a fan standpoint and from just a, a player standpoint, is think of the 2020 season for K State. They they were that was not a good team, um, not good at all. They had lost eight straight games, and they were 9-19 and 19 when they went into their game with KU at the end of February. They were 2-15, and 15, or 2-13 and 13 in the Big 12. And they played, like Drew's talking about here, they played a tight game with that KU team from start to finish. That was number one KU, the team that KU fans say that they deserve a national championship for because COVID called off the NCAA tournament. Um don't worry, it worked out for you guys two years later. You you got the, the national title that you, you thought you deserved in 2020. Um, that's what this team needs to have is like, look, I, I think the, the rivalry thing in the way that the transfer portal works, like if you don't have buy-in and you don't have enough consistency on your roster, I question why guys playing on this K-State team would care about this game more than others. Um, but the the fact of the matter is, they need to have that level of care tomorrow night because the crowd is going to be juiced. This is an important game and a defining point in their season, a big opportunity for them. And like, you should just know like this game does mean more, even though it doesn't mean more in terms of one win or one loss, it does mean more to a lot of people. And it, it, it's going to provide benefits to you. And that really bad 2020 team with flaws and all Cartier Jada, whoever else you want to point fingers at, uh, they they stepped up in that game in Manhattan against KU. Now, they came up just short, unfortunate, whatever, but they played a good game with them. This is what I would expect out of this K-State team tomorrow night, where you don't – look, a win goes a long ways, and you do need a win in a bad, bad way. Um, but at the end of the day, just show up and, and have some fight and have some pride in how you play, and – then we can at least start to have a conversation throughout the middle of the week and then maybe next Sunday about, hey, maybe there is some upside to how this team can play the rest of the season because we saw what they did against Kansas. But I'm really skeptical that we're going to see the performance that we want tomorrow night out of this K-State team. I, I think we're just going to see another team that comes out flat, and I think this is going to be one of the least appealing to the eyes K-State KU games in Manhattan in quite some time. I actually have a uh, two MVPs for this game, but neither are players. So okay, we, let's we, hear it. 
we can dive into that a little bit. Uh, my first MVP. The referees. Oh, oh Jerome see, Tank's best friends. I was actually going to say my first MVP is the crowd. It's because the crowd's going to be juiced. Like, this is going to be a game where if K-State's going to win, they're probably going to need some help from the crowd. And the crowd always delivers for this game in Manhattan. Uh, my second MVP is Jerome Tang, actually. Because I think that if he can, because if they win, it means that he got them on the right track and like got them on that give a damn level of we need to figure this out now or we're never going to figure it out. So I, I think that those two combined, because I think that player wise, you're just kind of getting what you're going to get at this point. Like I, I, you could hear me talk about how I could say Cam Carter or Arthur Kloom or Tyler Perry for the 23rd time this season. But I think those two combined with Tang and the crowd or would be what propels K-State to a win if they were to pull it off. Yeah, I, th- I think that's accurate. I think <clears throat> when you do talk about players and what they got to do, you know, we, we saw the big three score 50 points yesterday and lose. So it may, it may take 60 from <laughs> our top three guys to win this game. So that's a tall task, which which probably needs means someone needs to go off for like 28, 30 points um, in this game. So, um, But I agree with you. Um, the crowd has to be in it, and the team has to give the crowd a reason to be in it. Like that's part of the deal. Like mm-hmm. the crowd in that Oklahoma game, the crowd did not have a reason to be in that game most of the time. The team finally did. And the, I think the crowd was pretty juiced in the second half of that game when it when it was a seven point game, and then it was just another letdown. So um, you, the play on the court has to keep the crowd at the game, otherwise the crowd's going to do what they normally do and just sit on their hands because that's that happens when you're not playing well. So, and we've seen that too many times this year in in halves in this building. The Nebraska second half comes to mind, besides the Oklahoma uh, first half. So. Um, how do they respond? Um, for many of them, it will be the biggest environment or biggest stage game that they've played in and, and had the role that they're going to have in that game. So how do they handle that as well? Because um, sometimes you see guys trying to do too much. And we already know sometimes our guys try to do too much, which I think leads to a lot of the dumb turnovers we get. Um, so you got to avoid that as well because otherwise – if you're you're putting live ball tournaments turnovers in in KU's hands, it's gonna it's gonna get ugly. So, lots of factors to look at um, as far as that goes. But I think it's really gonna be about the mentality of K State and can I think Drew, you're right. Can Tang get the mentality correct in 48 hours before that game starts? You talk about the the players in that moment and and handling that crowd probably being the biggest for a lot of them. This is where this year's team differs quite a bit from last year's team where yes you had players that were you know a fairly new roster for the most part and new to k-state and all this and hadn't played in that game before but you did have players that at previous spots had played in games like that like obviously marquise noel and ishmasu they had gotten to experience it the year before and they played in a close game against ku uh on a team that wasn't very good keontae johnson was at florida and he played in games in Rep Arena and against, you know, who, whoever the flavor of the month in the SEC. It's always Kentucky and then one or two other teams that decide to be good that year. Desi Sill spent time at Arkansas when they were on their way up. He mm-hmm. played in big, big games and big crowds. Like, you had guys that had these experiences before playing in that game last year. This year, I mean w- – what what's the biggest game Tyler Perry has played in? You know, like what 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 crowd has been anywhere close to this? Uh, the same type of thing. You know, you think about for obviously you have Cam Carter that helps from last year, and maybe his experience will help. Kaluma has played in the Big East, great conference, but you know a lot of these venues that these teams play in are smaller for the most part. Um, he now he we do know that he torches Villanova, so he probably had a, a good game. <laughs> Uh, in Philadelphia at one point, but it would I, I'm going to guess that they probably played it in the 76ers arena. So like, this is going to be a different experience for a lot of these guys that you're you're relying pretty heavily on. And last year's team, although a lot of newcomers, different pieces, 
they all had experiences from other stops. And this team, it will be a little bit more raw, which is tough, especially for a guy like Tyler Perry, who you're relying a lot on. And his style of game, it, I think there's a lot more mental that has to go with shooting the ball too. Like one little thing off, you're shooting it that far away from the bucket, it can throw things off. You know, Arthur Kaluma, he can dunk it. it he, can, he can make those look pretty easy, if, even if there are some nerves there. So I'll be interested to see how it goes. I think if K-State wins this game on Monday, my MVP on the player side for them, I think you probably have to have – I mean, we know that you have to have two of the guys show up, but I think that this is probably a game where you need Cam Carter because he can do things inside and out, and you're not going to be able to rely on just one or the other against KU. You're going to have to make them work, and when KU has struggled defensively, it's when there's a lot of movement around them. Like Hunter Dickinson weighs down their defense, and he, he I, I call him KU's anchor because – He's their best player offensively and really good on that, but he's a bad anchor defensively because he's a little slow and can't move. So I think you have to be able to work that, and if you have that versatility with Cam Carter, then maybe it'll open up uh, something for some other guys. And then I would also just say, whoever the big is, catch the ball and put it up. Don't don't, don't let it bounce off your hands. Don't take a power dribbler. Just go straight up, you know? that they got into a lot of trouble yesterday at Oklahoma state where the bigs had to do too much with the ball before they shot it. And sometimes it worked out for them in that second half, but it also leads to disaster. So just go straight up. It's simple basketball philosophy. I know. Uh, and it's a lot trickier than that. Most of the time at the big 12 level, but I think things are going so poorly for this team. Like just go back to the basics. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you do just need to reset and get back to the basics because things have kind of gotten away from you. And that that that's why uh, I had Tang listed as one of my MVPs. Like, if they get back to the basics and look like they care, it's it's probably because of him and what he did to motivate them. Yeah. Uh, real quick, fan, if we're trying to be positive here, where is an edge that K-State – could have going into tomorrow's game with the Jayhawks? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I I, I think it's it's good that we have uh, kind of multiple bigs that we can throw at Dickinson because we it gives us options to different guys that can guard him, um, which is a, which is a good thing. Like and that gives you a chance. Um, KU has not been a great rebounding team this year, and they actually haven't been that great at getting to the free throw line either, um, compared to other teams. But that it's hard to know if if K State can handle that. K State actually, you know, yesterday outscored Oklahoma State on the offensive glass on second chances, like twenty to ten. So you saw some 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 good things there um, as far as that goes. KU also is not real great at forcing turnovers this year, so. There's some of those things that we've struggled with that match up well, but you know, the problem is I thought last week both Oklahoma schools, those were good matchups for the same reason. Yeah. And it didn't matter. So I look at those things and it's like these are things you should be able to exploit and take care of and, and do some things because because you match up well with this team. Um and and I think that can be the case in some of these areas for K State, but then you know, it goes back to what I said before. It's a prove it moment where you got to prove that you can take advantage of that matchup if it's there. And we haven't seen K State do that. Um, and, I, and I do think the K State defense has to to step up and play much better than they did in the uh, second half of that game against Oklahoma State. Um, can they do that? Uh, will they do that? I'm not sure. But you know, it's, it's the normal stuff we got to watch: rebounding, um, turnovers. And then can case they get to the free throw line at all? Because, you know, that's the thing that we've seen that has really been the most consistent part of our downfall the last two weeks is the free throw line. And and that, that's a tough ask um, against KU, um, even though on paper it looks like it shouldn't be, but it, it is just the way we've seen this K-State team play lately. All right. Last thing on the K-State-KU game. Give me your guys' score predictions. Uh, I'll say K State keeps it close, but loses 
Yeah, I'd, I'd say something similar. I, I think I think it probably is sort of an offensive game, kind of like the second half yesterday, not quite to that level. And I'd, I'd say KU wins like 78-70. All right, well, you guys have more faith than me. I'm taking Kansas 77-61. to I just I don't like where this team is at right now. And bad teams get beat bad by good teams. And KU is playing like a good team right now after their win over Houston. And K-State, I just don't know where they're going to find their answers. So we'll see. Uh, this is a big opportunity, though. I mean, if K-State wins, they're back to 5-5 five and five in Big 12 play. They get their biggest win of the season, and you can start to make a case to yourself, all right, maybe this wakes the team up, they shake everything off, and they're ready to roll the rest of the season. But got to have it tomorrow night if you're K-State, because if not, I would not worry too much about this team being competitive the rest of the way.